Okay, these instructions show how I replaced the ball bearings on my Flint and Walling SPJ series irrigation pump. The model on mine was 94J115. Just to let you know how I did this, uh, hey, I made this up. I'm not a professional. Make sure uh, you use tools, uh, but uh, you could get injured, so be careful there. Find the owner's manual. Uh, the owner's manual does show in mine that uh, the motor is one unit and does not appear to be serviceable. So. Uh, keep that in mind. Following this procedure, of course, could damage your pump so it's totally unusable. So in all those cases, um, if you don't want any of that, please consult a professional and uh, make sure that doesn't happen. I'm going to give you a little demonstration of what a bad motor bearing sounds like on my pump. Okay, why am I fixing my pump? Well, my neighbors have replaced their pumps with different brands, and I've seen that they're replacing them again because they're only lasting one to five years. This pump's been online for 13 years, showing it's very robust. After uh, disassembling, I found that the construction of it was extremely high quality. I'll tell you, nothing broke and everything came apart with a fair amount of ease and went back together. Um, a couple years ago, I discovered that the label on the top was fading, and uh, I took a picture of my label, so I actually had the model number. If you look at it today, there's maybe nothing there on yours, so um, you may have to do some research to get the right thing. But when you get it apart, you're really looking to see what the part number is you're going to replace. You're going to need some tools for this. Some soft hammer, screwdrivers, chisels. Uh, the tough one might be a gear puller. You know, you may not have that laying around. You might need one, one or two sizes of gear pullers, but uh, in the end, a bearing puller would also work. So, uh, ring splitter, and wear some protective gear. The parts you might need, um, you might need a new bearing. Mine had a 6203RS in it. I replaced it with a Japanese uh, Nachi 6203-2NS. When you get it apart, you'll be able to see that. The other thing I replaced in mine was the rotary seal. The seal is what keeps the water out. After 13 years, it dried out. I also had it out of the water for five days, and that can also contribute to failure later on. So I went ahead and, and uh, replaced it. It wasn't too terribly expensive. Make sure you mark your components before you take them apart. If you're going to repaint it, stamp it. Um, where the where the marks are. What you're marking is um, the seams where you take things apart so you can realign them when you get back. You have to be very careful with the electronics on the back. So the electronics board, uh, we're going to have to cover off numerous times. This motor is extremely heavy. It's very easy to drop it or set it on there. Uh, so when you're not working on that section, put the cap back on and protect it. And take some photos so you know what yours looks like. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to turn the power off. And uh, make sure you turn the power off at the circuit breaker. Don't use the little pump thing. And uh, then you're going to go ahead and uh, pull the cap off the end and remove the wires. Mine uh, is 230 volt, and uh, that's what you're seeing here in the picture. This unit also supports 120, so you might have 120 wiring. Make sure you pay attention to that. The first thing we're going to do is drop the motor off the pump. It's not too hard. There's four bolts. They're right uh, at the pump assembly. I have them circled here, the top two. Mine, I uh, kind of cheated. I, I just went and got the air wrench because it was near the garage and just popped those off. Uh, they should come off with a socket. They didn't seem too terribly stuck. Um, once you get those four bolts out, and make sure all four are out before you play this game. And make sure your electric is disassembled. You want to get the motor out of the pump housing. Basically, I hit the hammer along the seam. And don't push down because if your, your bracket isn't rusted, there is a bracket under the motor. So you want to push side to side, possibly lift up some. Once you get that seal broken, it'll just snap right out of there. First thing you want to do before you leave the pump outside uh, is you want to look in the pump housing and you're looking for that rubber gasket in the center. Uh, one is one, is it there? Because uh, I don't account for it in the video and it, it is a component. Two, you can see mine's all rusted in there, but if you touch it, it should feel rubbery. doesn't look like it's cracked. I left mine, I did not replace it. I recommend you don't do this over grass. Go ahead and, and walk back into your garage or barn or wherever you're going to do this. Maybe some pavement. First thing we do is remove the impeller cover. You can see that right on top of the pump. The bolts might get a little look a little crusty. I just took a wire brush. Uh, they cleaned right up. The bolts came right out. They were stainless steel. There was no damage at all. The washers, on the other hand, they were kind of embedded, and I left them. Underneath that cap, you're going to find the impeller. The impeller is shown there on my left hand. And to get the impeller off, you have to take a wrench, and you have to stick it in the uh, uh, gap between the a pump plate and the motor. The shaft has a notch in it. Now yours may vary. Sometimes the notches are on the end because the capacitors and everything are on the end. It's probably not there. It's probably on the on the shaft right where I have it. This mine was a 916. Stick that in there. The impeller is going to open like a uh, peanut butter jar. Um, it's pretty rugged. It's, it is made of plastic, but you know, stick your hand on the thing and turn it left and get that thing off there. After you take it off, uh, the spring is going to come off in your hand. Don't lose that. This is the seal, the ceramic seal. 
that keeps the water from leaving the pump compartment. And uh, we need to get this off. Now, I replaced this, so I wasn't too worried about it. But on the bottom, it will separate. You'll see the thing there. But you have to be very careful. Uh, that, that is ceramic on the bottom. You don't want to chip or break that if you're going to reuse this part. Um, use a little lubricant. If you still have your wrench on your shaft, um, keep the wrench there and try to twist this off. You can possibly pull that top ring out and put it back on later. But when you reassemble it, you have to reassemble it as uh, one piece to make sure it goes back in properly. Once you get that off, uh, we're going to go ahead and disassemble the pump housing ring from the motor. And that's done with four bolts. Those four bolts are uh, in the section where you um, disconnected or, or put the wrench on the shaft. Please go ahead and, and uh, take those four out. Make sure you put your marks in. Remember, this is some, a seam we're taking apart. Put your marks in. Use a stamp. Uh, make sure things align again. At this point, you want to do a little prep work. Uh, I used a wood vise several times. You want to uh, possibly take a board like I did and uh, drill a couple holes in it. And you want some holes that hold the long part of the shaft and the soft part. One important thing is you don't drill the holes all the way through. We're going to be pounding on this quite a bit. You don't want to damage the shaft. So let the wood act as an insulator so you don't damage that. Uh, we're going to remove the back cover again. First thing I'd like you to do is look carefully at your electronics. There's a couple things you want to look, look at. One is observe how the capacitor sits in a recess. And uh, we're going to have to put it back in there several times. And also look at that spring assembly that's on the end of the shaft and how it's um, oriented towards the button. Yours might be different, so make sure you take a good look at it, possibly take a picture. To get that uh, spring assembly off, we're going to go ahead and remove the circuit board. And uh, there's two screws that hold that. We're going to remove the circuit board and push everything to the left. I use two screws to pry up the assembly. Be very careful. There's a snap ring underneath, so don't get hooked on the snap ring. And be sure to move your screwdrivers around so that you don't bend that metal plate. In that same area, you're going to see four bolts uh, symmetrically. On mine, there were four. There might be two, but usually there's four. And those four long bolts are what hold the uh, bell housings on the pump assembly. So please uh, loosen and remove all four of those. So the first thing I'd like you to notice is that I put the electric cap back on because um, we're done in that compartment, and that's at the top. What we're trying to do is separate the front bell housing, that's the side with the threads on it, from the uh, the main body where the coils are. Uh, you can see in the bottom left I made a pretty big gap. I didn't notice that it had broken loose. All we're trying to do is break it loose and once it's a little loose, if you, if you actually pick up the shaft, you'll see that the, the gap is there. Okay, so to get the, the shaft assembly out, we have to open up the electronic sections again. Now, this is very important. You can't rest it on the end of the bell housing because that's what we're actually taking out. So what you need to do is you need to hold the, the uh, unit from the the case that contains the coils, the cylinder. I actually did mine in my wood vise. You could possibly leave it on the floor, put a knee on it or something. But the most important thing is if you're playing this game and all your electronics are still in place, don't hit them. Uh, ultimately, it came out fairly easy, but I had to switch from this dead man's uh, hammer to a rawhide hammer, and uh, I did it did pop right out. When you're done, you're going to have the whole shaft in your hand, and you're also going to have, you need to look for this ring. So if you look in the bottom left picture, you see there's a little ring there that goes behind the, the uh, between the washer and the back bell housing. Uh, you need to find that ring and set it aside. Uh, you're going to have <coughs> the shaft, and you're also going to have the front bell housing still attached to the shaft. We're going to take that off next. Uh, you can see I had some, some guests that like to live in my pump over the years. So uh, to get the the uh, front bell housing off the the uh, and that one, I'm sorry, the bearing is actually held on with two bolts. To get to the bolt, you're going to stick a wrench inside the fan, and then uh, you just use a socket, remove the two bolts on either side of the shaft. And now to get the assembly apart, um, uh, you could put it back in your uh, wood vise and um, you want basically you want to hold the bell housing and you want to tap out the bearing. Mine came out fairly easily so uh, again once it came out it uh, just popped out in my hand. Okay now when you're done you're going to have the, the shaft and um, you're going to see a couple things on there. First is there's a rubber washer. Pull that off and set it aside. We're going to need that again. The other item is there are two uh, retention clips on the shaft. Uh, do not open these clips off and slip them off the shaft um, at the point where they're installed. You need to get them out of the groove and slip them off the end. If you if you try to slip them off the shaft, these are the kind that'll bend. So uh, you need to coax them out of the groove and, and get them up the shaft. The holes were really tiny and um, my my tool didn't fit. I had to do it the hard way. Okay, so 
uh, you're finally ready to pull the bearings. Um, there are several videos online on pulling bearings off of motors. If you need to consult them, I, I recommend you do that. I'm not going to waste your time um, showing you the various techniques. But I used uh, a gear puller, and um, these things came right off with, with very little effort. Uh, I did dent the shaft on the end, so keep that in mind. It didn't affect it, but um, you may want to put something on there to keep you from doing that. It's a good time to clean up your unit. You may want to take the rust off. You might want to paint at this point. Make sure you inspect all those bolts, and uh, if you broke anything, those are good quality stainless steel bolts, so make sure you, you replace them with such. All right, let's get this thing put back together. You can see my, in the center picture there where I dented the shaft, taking off that bearing. Fortunately, it didn't affect it. So uh, to put the bearing back on, you, you can set the bearing back on top. Make sure you have your unit on that stable surface where you can pound without damaging the end. Uh, we're going to take the dead man's hammer or something soft. To hit the center ring on the bearing. You don't want to hit the red part or the outside. You could damage your bearing. And I did not have a round rod. I found this square one. The square one did sit across the center of the inner ring, which is what you want. And you can see that in the right picture, and I use that to pound that on. <laughs> Again, make sure you're not pounding on the, the uh, orange ring. When you pound those down, you're going to pound those all the way till they get to the retention clip. Keep looking because you don't want to pound on it after it hits the retention clip. You could pop that out of the socket or bend it. And then getting that bearing off is going to be hard. I did the short side first. If you do the long side first, you can see the bottom left. Make sure you're not resting on the bearing when you do the other side because you'll be pounding on it again and possibly damage that retention ring. And something I should have pointed out before is make sure where the bearing goes is nice and shiny. It should be you just took one off there. That bottom retention ring was there the whole time. We never took that off. Leave that there. You'll see on the right side, that's where the bearing is going to set down to before you start pounding on it. So, uh, you know, it's going to sit right down there and just tap it on. And uh, when it gets down to the retention ring, you'll be all set. We're at a point where you can put those uh, external retention clips back on. Uh, remember, we had two. We had one that was under the plate in the back and one that went down to the bearing on the front. And go ahead and um, stick your rubber washer back on after you're done as well. Next thing we do is uh, we're going to reassemble the front bearing into the cowling. And to do that, um, you have to get those two screws in. And keep in mind that those washers have to be on top of the bearing. So what I did is uh, I kind of set it up on, uh, on my wood vise. And um, I dropped all the components in there, set the shaft on at the same time. Uh, remember, the, the, the washers have to go on top of the bearing as you start, you know, start coaxing this thing in. And then what I did is I, I tapped on it. Now, I didn't, I didn't tap on it to get all the way. I was worried about uh, popping the retention rings. What I did is I pap tapped it down until I was a good part in and able to, to put the nuts on, pull the bearing in the rest of the way using the nuts and bolts. So I tightened those up, and you'll see on the bottom right, uh, I just pulled that down until the bearing was flush, and uh, that worked fine for me. Make sure you alternate on those. Okay, at this point, we're going to get the uh, motor coil assembly, and we're going to set that uh, face up. So we're looking down into the coil, and uh, that's the electronics button down there on the bottom we see. And you can put that metal plate back in. That plate goes in with the, um, it goes, the flat side goes towards the cowling, the motor bell, and then um, the little prong should stick up. Don't forget that, okay? Make sure you get that in there. We have our assembly that's completed. We're going to drop that right back down in the unit. And uh, there's that washer I remind you to put back on. So make sure that washer's in place. And this is a, an important alignment time. So you, uh, in mine, as I told you, I removed the alignment markers by painting over them. But my neighbor has the same unit, and uh, that bolt has to line up with the drainage hole on the bottom. And that's what I did, and it worked out fine for me. All right, the question was, do I pound or push? And I was going to pound on this thing, and I actually leaned on it with both hands, and it just popped into place. Now, unfortunately, when I did that, I wasn't paying attention to alignment, and I had to kind of pull it out and redo alignment. That was a pain. So if you can manage to do that and keep your alignment, things work out great, hopefully. You could possibly pound on a little bit, but remember, we're trying not to snap out all those rings. Nice quality product. Mine went right back in. All right, I dropped my four bolts back in. Uh, alignment was really good. Uh, hand tighten them and then uh, snug them up. You're going to have to go in a circular motion around the unit and um, tighten those up because remember at this point you're pulling in the bearings the rest of the way to uh, make sure they're seated. On the top left there you can see I put in the, uh, that's time to put the spring assembly back on and it has a retention ring. You can see the retention ring on the bottom. Push it all the way down to that ring. Uh, put your electronics board on it. At this point, I'd like you to take a moment. Make sure you didn't damage any wires. Just look at all those wires. Make sure all the insulation's on them. Uh, didn't crack the board. Didn't screw something up, okay? Because that's going to be bad. All right, it's time for do a little inspection. And uh, we're going to go back and look at the uh, things we paid attention to. Uh, one thing to note is on that spring assembly, it goes on the end of the shaft. Um, on mine, you can see how the metal plate is at the top of that groove. It needs to be there. The bottom was for a disassembly groove. Um, make sure that when you had it off, you didn't screw it up and knock it into the disassembly groove. 
And the other thing is make sure that capacitor is down where it belongs because otherwise the whole thing may not go back together. Go ahead and put your cap back on. And uh, if you got a new seal kit like I did, um, make sure you check your numbers. This just happened to be the number on my model. Um, owner's manual had that part number. Make sure that uh, you do the next couple of steps. If you didn't buy the seal kit, don't do the next couple of steps. So the, the first thing we have to do is we have to get, we have to get the pump uh, re uh, round housing. The, the part that you see on the left. If you look inside that, you're going to see the old ceramic that's in there. And buried under all that rust, there's actually a piece of rubber. And what I did is I pulled out the ceramic first, and then I stuck a screwdriver in there and I peeled out the rubber. It was a little dirty in there, so I cleaned it out with a wire brush. And the instructions say when you're setting the new ceramic to use water. I think what they're really leaning towards is making sure that uh, the ceramic's wet when you fire it up the first time. I, I was able to stick that whole assembly in as once. I pushed it in by hand because you do not want to chip that ceramic. All right, now that that uh, ceramic ring is in, we're ready to put the uh, pump housing ring back on the pump. This is another alignment opportunity. Look for your markings. Uh, on mine, you'll see that big square wing on the, on the top left. That was the indicator of where the bottom was on that, so I aligned that with the bottom of the pump. And then I put my four screws back in and um, tighten that thing right back up. So at this point, I was ready to put the, uh, the spring and the pump impeller back on. You'll see there that I installed the other ceramic seal. This isn't the new one. It was a little tight going on, so I had to put some lubricant in there. You'll see water there because, again, the instructions call for making sure you have water present when you're uh, putting the whole assembly together. Put your uh, wrench back in there on the shaft to hold it. Put the impeller back on top. Push it down and um, on, close it back up like a peanut butter jar. Um, now, I don't know if any ever go in the opposite direction, but... Every pump I've ever worked on, they open like a peanut butter jar. Make sure you don't strip it. It should go on really easy uh, and twist right down to the bottom and uh, snug it up by hand. Okay, so now we're going to put the uh, impeller cover back on. This is another alignment opportunity. You'll see my impeller cover has a wing on it, uh, a little fin. Uh, that fin went on the bottom. Uh, the impeller cover went on both directions, so make sure you have the alignment right on that. It's a good time to find that parts manual we found online and uh, check it. You can see all the pump components in here, and you want to make sure that uh, at this point, the only thing you, thing you should have left is four bolts. So those are the four bolts we're going to use to put the unit back. You can see I have a gasket ring in this one. I couldn't find that. So what I did is uh, I had some of this uh, silicone gasket maker sitting around. It's about 10 years old. Uh, it actually worked just fine. I made a nice 1 8 inch bead all the way around the pump. Uh, the other thing was my bracket that held the motor was uh, broken. I had some old um, shock a uh, piece of shock rubber and I put that in there just to give it some some spacers. Now we're going to get ready for reassembly. To get ready for reassembly you want to make sure your bolts are present, you want to make sure you have your wrenches, you want to make sure you've cleaned up the area, and you want to make sure your pump seal is in place. You're going to take the pump and uh, put it upright and you're going to push it right back into that pump housing. Uh, make sure that little rubber, if you took it out, it's, it's back in there. Um, if it's rusted in place like mine was, just push your pump back in. Put your bolts back in, tighten it up, and if I uh, use any gasket sealer like I did, you'll see it um, it oozed out all over the place. I let mine dry for 24 hours, and I just went and cut it off, and I, d I didn't run the pump for 24 hours. Uh, okay, so go ahead and uh, remove the pump cover. Let's put your wires back on. Use your wiring plan, not mine. Um, mine was 230 volt. I put that back in, and uh, I put the pump cover back on, and then I turned the power back on. Here's what they look like before and after. You, you know, I'll give you a little, little sample reminding you what it sounded like before, and uh, I'll give you what the sound of success is. So, thank you very much for watching. All right, there we go. Moment of truth. Brand new bearings, and the air is out, and I'm back in business. Let's see if that lasts another 12, 13 years. Quiet as it can be. Shoot, quiet in the uh, air conditioners. Big difference, huh?